This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Yeah, so uh, in the last class we discussed about the importance of converting your uh, source code into an executable code, right? The executable codes are very easy to use, right? And today we will look into that build management, how we can convert the source code into uh, an executable code. So we are going to take a sample project and do that. We, we are going to work on a sample project. And uh, in this sample project, uh, I will show you uh, different different build tools such as uh, NPM, Maven, and PIP. Uh, you know, give you some introduction about the dependency management, etc. And then using these build tools, we will convert the three projects. There are three projects within this one project, and all the three projects we will be converting into executable files or artifacts. Artifacts is another word used for uh, executable files. It is a common word that we use. And then after creating the artifact, then probably rather than keeping them as artifact, you might want to convert them into the Docker images. That is also very, very important. So we will talk about how we can create Docker image after creating the artifact. So you know the significance of creating a docker image right it will make things more easy if you have executable file it has limitations or restrictions but uh, you know if you have docker file all you need to do is just use a docker run command and your software will start running so we will be talking about that in more detail later on so this is the agenda for today so first of all, let me explain this example project to you. Give me one second. All right, so I'll take it. So I'm going to log into my AWS. Somebody is basically your watch is breaking. Is it same for everyone? Uh, I'm clear. Maybe some. Yeah, I think uh, it's not a problem at my side. Mm -hmm. uh, you can try to uh, disconnect and join again. Doesn't look like a problem at my side. Okay. All right, uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, log into my AWS machine and and then I will show you a project that we are going to work on, right? I'm going to log into Tom's laptop. Give me one second. Okay, so uh, right now I am on Tom's laptop and let me go to the project folder of Tom. And if you remember, uh, this is a sample code that we downloaded from internet, right? And uh, I will, I, I have already sent you this code URL from where you can download it. So if you look into that, or maybe uh, either I can show you that from Tom's laptop or I can show you from the GitHub, uh, the actual place where I downloaded the code. And there's a tutorial for learning Kubernetes in three ways. Uh, from, from this tutorial, I got that code. And that is the code I'm using. All right. 
so if you uh, know this is the url i will share uh, this url with you all all right uh, if you go to this url you know you would find three folders a uh, say front end say logic and a say web app so there are three projects that you can find inside this folder you can say three microservices and combining all the three microservices together this is a complete project and different microservices are written in different programming language one is the sa front end and then you have sa logic and then you have sa web app there are three different software applications you will find inside this repository and if you go to the sa front end this is a microservice that is written in javascript programming language and similarly sa logic is written in python python programming language and uh, sa web app is written in java so all the three microservices are written in different different programming languages and you now i will show you the architecture i mean how these microservices are defined on this particular project you know uh, i will give a quick overview how that is done so uh, for this particular project there are a total three uh, three services one is one is the front end service the front end service is you know it's a source code written in javascript and a front end as you might already know it will listen to the browser assume uh, you are running the front end application on a server then the browser will always connect to the front end application and get the web page from there and that is what front end application will do and then we also have a back end application back end application that is written in java programming language and this is also called if this is named as sa web app sa web app and then we have one more application that is written in python this is uh, another backend that is written in python programming language it is named sa logic and then we have front end that is written in javascript programming language it is named as sa front end so these are the three software applications that come under one single project and when this project you know right now what you see in that url it is the plain text code wrote by the developers they are not executable files so if you want to run the software first you want to convert them into executable file and then you can run those executable files inside the machine but right now we are talking about the plain text code wrote by your developers that is what you find inside the github url and for that project this is you know the different services are written in different programming language this is written in javascript javascript is a programming language the backend is written in uh, java programming language this backend is written in python so this is another another service you know it's like a file processing service or text processing service that is written in python and uh, the, this is architected in such a way that any browser that connects to port 80 of the front end you know the browser would get a response from the front end and then it will display a good looking website on the browser and then uh, you know it, it will be like a page that where you can enter some text you know a browser will display some page where you can enter some text and click on send button then the browser will connect to the backend then send a message to the backend and this message backend will take it and it will forward the message to the python application that is running behind which will you know uh, do some processing of the image and give the response and you know the response would become displayed on the browser so this is the architecture 
this is the architecture right i mean i i uh, when we discuss about in the retail store we have different different services right shopping cart can be one service prime customer can be another service similarly for this particular project there are total three services one is the front end and the back end and then another back end that is for uh, taking a message and processing them and these are three different software applications and right now you know uh, we are talking about the runtime but right now we are not running them right now we are just looking at the source code the plain text code wrought by developers in order to accomplish the requirement of this project right i mean uh, this one has the javascript code this one has the java code and this one has the python code so that is exactly what we are going to take a look um take a look at the code right so if you go to the folder the same code is what tom cloned on his laptop so if you look into sf front end folder you would find there is a folder with the name src this is where uh, you can find different different javascript app.js index.js these are different different javascript and components and then uh, if you go to the public folder you would be able to see the html file the images the style sheets right to make this website look good on the browser you need some components right and those components are kept inside the public folder and then uh, you have a docker file we will talk about that later and uh, yesterday i already told in the last class i told you when when you install uh, the developers when they write the source code the code will depend on different different dependencies right so and what developer generally do is they will create one file and list all the dependency in that file and all the dependency and their transitive dependency need to be downloaded if you want your code to work properly so what whoever developed this application the front end he has created a file called package.json and inside that file he has mentioned all the dependency that his code depends on right this is the architecture of the front end application and the front end application would be serving the web pages to the browser that's what the front end application will do and then we have the sa web app this is the java backend application and browser can directly communicate to this backend application also after the initial front end communication then uh, front end uh, which is running on the browser can directly connect to the backend and inside the backend if you go into that particular project or that particular service there is a src folder and it contain different different java programs over there right these are different different java programs available and then it has a docker file it has a com.xml file in case of a java project also for whatever project it is developer would create one single file and inside that file he will mention what are the dependency his project depends on so in case of java projects it is pom.xml so if you go ahead and open pom.xml you would actually be able to find one field where uh, the developer had mentioned the list of dependencies the dependencies on which his source code depends on so these dependencies one by one they need to be downloaded if you want your code to work properly and similarly if you go to the next project the python project sa logic project over here also you know there is a sa folder if you go inside the sa folder there is a python program this is a python program and also there is a file called requirement.txt this is the file uh, where the developer have mentioned the list of dependency to be downloaded. So you have total three project for all the project. As you can see, there is one file where developer had mentioned the list of dependency, the code depends on. And now you have this responsibility 
to build this source code into executable files you have three different microservices each microservices need to be built into different executable file and you can see each microservice has its own source code and a list of dependency that the code depends on right so our intention what we are going to do today is we are going to build this project into an executable code each microservices will be built into an executable code and that is exactly what we are going to do today and remember these services are written in different programming languages one is in javascript other one is in java other one is in python it doesn't matter there are always ways to automate the executable file creation right there are always whatever programming language it is there are different different tools available that we can use to convert the source code into the executable form in a completely automated way and that is exactly what we are going to explore for today right cool so uh, any questions about this project Yeah, it was just so an hour. Yeah. yeah. What is DevOps engineer's role here? Like uh, developers doing these files. Uh, so DevOps engineer's job is like to convert this well file. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, that is part of DevOps engineer's role. One of the many uh, responsibility of software DevOps engineer. Yes. Okay, so we don't care about like you know, it's right or we means it's need uh, that we know the language, each and every language like JavaScript, Python. Uh, we already know, or we can ask the developers. I mean, you don't really need to uh, know the exact structure, or you need to understand the programs. That is unnecessary. You don't need to be a developer to understand uh, the DevOps role. So uh, this thing you need to understand. You need to have a basic understanding about what is the build tool you would use for a given programming language or the architecture, how the folder structure, right? These things maybe you need to know. I mean, yes, you need to know the name of the dependency okay. file where developer keep the dependencies those things you need to know otherwise you don't need to worry about the programming or the functions or the classes that developers have written it's not important okay yeah thank you uh basil i have one question um basil, uh, yesterday mm -hmm. yeah yeah please do yeah please uh, basically yesterday yesterday you told like uh, you are gonna do some automation today so what automation we are going to do today uh, we are going to convert the source code into executables okay and is there any jenkins role also there today no uh, we, we will uh, yeah uh, not today i don't think so Okay. Yeah. yeah, Basil. Basil, we are telling about there is a different different dependency for Java. You are using Python dependency and the Python. We are using .txt, right? So my question is, how DevOps engine know every code is every dependency stable? Is there any tool to identify, or if you has any issue directly interact with the developer? Generally, developer creates one file and list all the dependency in that file. Okay, if you find any issue, anything, then you can immediately talk to this developer person, right? So, right, right. Generally, the error clearly says uh, some particular function is missing. And if you don't see the clear error, searching in Google would actually give you what dependency is missing. Yeah, that, uh, we will, we will, yeah, the, we will show that part a bit later, point of time. 
Yeah. We, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I try to troubleshoot them without uh, having to worry much about them. So that is the overall plan. And we will come to that. Okay. Sure. Thanks. All right. So uh, let us continue. So our next topic, I mean, uh, what we are going to discuss next is uh, some build tools. So I will I'll talk about that. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, take a look at this project. You have a different uh, different microservices that are returning different programming languages. This is in JavaScript. This is in Java, and this is in Python. And in case of JavaScript application, we would be using a build tool called uh, npm and in case of java applications we would be using a build tool called maven and in case of sa logic we would use a pip python pip so uh, let me draw it out so forget about you know these things Currently, we have source code. What we have is only the source code. Remember, these are all source code, the plain text code wrought by your developers. And now you want this code to be converted into an executable file. Right? Some kind of executable files that you want to create. You know, uh, so. And there are different types of executable file. Remember, I mean, the exe file in Windows, it is one type of executable file. And then uh, vectors itself, the downloaded vectors file itself, it is another type of executable file. Then dev file in Ubuntu is a executable file. Jar file that you install on your computer is an, another example of executable file. So for javascript applications generally right for the front end applications that are uh, that are written in javascript the final executable file what you need is basically a website like vectors right so you have the source code and you have the list of dependency that the developer have mentioned inside a file. What you will do is you will take the source code, compile them. You download all the dependencies that are needed for this source code. You can get that information from a file that developer have created where he put the list of dependency. And then finally, there are some images type sheets, right? That will make the front end look good on the browser. You need that and you want to combine all of them together and you want to create one website file right probably a folder like WordPress that contains everything the dependencies the source code the images and everything you can put this inside a Apache web server and then people will be able to browse it uh, using their browser by connecting to Apache so you should build the front-end application into a website which can be put inside the war ww html folder of apache and then people can start browsing it so you want to build the website files the similar files that we downloaded from wetpress website right when we downloaded wetpress from wetpress website we did not bother about the source code we did not bother about the dependency we did not bother about the images style sheets or anything like that what we got is one folder which is ready to put inside the war ww html folder of apache and that's it you started browsing wordpress right so you want a similar for generally for 
front end javascript applications this is the final artifact that you want to create and in order to do that you will be using a build tool called npm 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 is the name of the build tool which can automate this whole process it can take the source code it can find the file where developer mentioned the list of dependency download all the dependency download the transitive dependency then take those images from the public folder or whatever put them all together and create this final website files that can be put inside the wwww html folder of apache and this is what you want to do in case of uh, npm in case of this project this is how you want to build it you will use a tool called npm which will automate this whole process similarly in case of the java application we are going to create an executable file this is a different type of executable file a jar file a jar file you might have heard about jar file or you might have used jar file when you try to install flash player on your laptop or you try to install java inside your laptop what do you do you would be downloading a jar file from uh, the adobe website right and then you double click on it and you execute it jar file is an executable file uh, similar to the exe file in windows right so in case of java jar is the common executable there are other types of files as well there are war files there are other types of files as well but in our case we are going to create a jar executable files so what that means is once you created this file you can just double click or you know you can just run a command and execute this file uh, that's what uh, we are going to do and in order to do that we are going to use a tool called maven maven is a common build tool a very commonly used build tool for java based projects only for java based projects we use maven as the build tool all right and what maven can do is it can compile the code it can take the dependencies from the form.xml file it can download all the dependency and the transitive dependency and it can combine images or anything if needed but in this case no <clears throat> then it can put all of compress all of them together and create one single executable file that's what maven can do just so this single executable file will contain the source code the dependencies and everything so anyone who has this exe file they can just execute this exe file and your software will start running so this is the kind of executable file i want to create for my java project or the sa web app project and similarly in case of python i want to make python executable so in case of python you don't need to do compiling or anything you can just go ahead and run the python programs all you have to do is you have to install the dependencies so there are some dependencies that the python depends on and it is currently put inside a file called requirement.txt and there is a tool called a python pip that can download and install all these dependencies and then you would be creating you know then your code become ready to execute because if you have the executable file if you have the dependency downloaded that's all python need you can start running your python programs so we are using pip pip to uh, read this file and then download all the dependency that your program depends on now the program can be executed properly so we have three projects all three projects you have the source code and you want to convert all the project into executable form we, we call them artifacts or executable files whatever name you want to call it 
and this step is not a very straightforward step you have the code you have a lot of dependency the code depends on you want to download each and every dependency that dependency depends on other dependency so you should download that and you know get all the dependency downloaded and then you want to combine some images etc to create the executable file and then for uh, right there are a number of steps that needs to be done if you have to do it manually there are many things that you have to do uh, to create this executable file but fortunately we are not going to do any of these steps manually we are going to use one of these build tools npm for this project maven for this project and pip for this project they will take the source code compile them if needed download the dependency combine images if needed create a final executable file and in case of javascript front-end application the final executable file is a website right it's a website folder that can be put inside a web server var wwhtml folder and then you can see the application in the browser and in case of the java application we we, we are going to create a jar executable file whenever you execute this file it will start working and of course you need a machine right after creating the executable file you will run them inside a machine we will be creating that machine later uh, right now you know we are not worrying about how to run the software we are worrying about creating the executable files so that software can run smoothly that's what we do we are just creating the executable file and this is called build process or executable file creation or artifact creation uh, different different names right name conventions and we use some build tool to automate this entire build process and that is exactly what we are going to do all right basin uh, sorry to interrupt you but like uh... Uh, how to identify that uh, the code was written in which language like javascript and there should be some distinguish uh, between javascript and java and python right by seeing the code actually uh, these are not your uh, your responsibility developer develop this source code they will create this uh, you know they know uh, about npm right javascript developers would be configuring the code in such a way that it can be built using npm so you would already have this dependency file you just install npm use npm to build this project into executable so that would be pretty much of the devops engineer responsibility so uh, it's not that is not no um means like as a uh, devops engineer we should know right uh, whether um, in which language code was developed for example um, like if yeah. i want to use npm it should be in javascript right how to identify that uh, we no need to bother about that also uh, no what i'm trying to say is yeah you don't need to bother about that also uh, you know that information from your developers when you work on a project you would uh, know normally know which programming language it is written that is the information you get from your developers. So, yeah, and also if you look into the uh, code, if you find files that end with .js, you can assume it is a JavaScript code. Or if the file name end with .java, it is a Java code. If uh, the file name end with .py, it is a Python code. So that is a quick way of identifying uh, no, just look into the source code and check the file extension. That is one way of identifying which programming language it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basic. All right. uh, yeah. So as per your statement, it looks like, like uh, all the required information which is needed to execute a file through a right. tool we will be received from uh, developers and correct that's correct that's right. okay
so uh, i just uh, want to make sure that you have a clear overview about what is happening in the background when you use these tools but yeah your responsibility are generally to use the right tool for the right project and uh, whatever the tools need would be already there inside that right like i have shown you this folder contains a file called packages.json this folder contains a file with the name form.xml this one contains a requirement.txt so in those files you already have the list of dependency mentioned so we are going to simply use the tools to build the project into executable we are not going inside in depth into these tools that's that's generally not your cup of tea All right. Hello. So, so, right, so by using those tools, we can uh, not only do the conversion. That means execute. We cannot. Oh, sorry. We can convert into executable files. Uh, other works also we can do. Build what tools are mainly for uh, creating executable files. Whatever that needs to be done in between, do them and create the executable file. That is the simple uh, functionality of an executable file. Of a build tool, sorry. Okay. It, it creates That's source code into executable That's file. Right. All right, so uh, what we will do is we will go ahead and create some artifacts. Okay, that's what we are going to do. We will create the artifacts or uh, executable files, right? So, Bizzle, how we are using Maven here? Like, are we not going to convert it into exe file now? Yeah, that's what we are going to do. Okay, uh, so let us do that. Let us convert the source code into the exe file. We have somebody is uh, unmute. What is artifact here? Executable it? file. It's another word for executable file. A common word used for executable files. Both are same. Whether I say artifact or if I say executable file, both means the same thing. Okay. Yeah, cool. So uh, now let us talk about. Um, yeah, now let's convert our code into executables. So executable files are also called artifacts, right? So whether I say artifact or executable files it means the same thing all right okay so uh, let us go to tom's laptop this is a tom's i need to reload it So I have already downloaded the code into Tom's laptop yesterday. You can also do it. And the complete code is available in the folder, a retail project. There is SA front end folder, SA logic folder, and SA web app folder. First of all, I'm going to build the SA front end folder using the build tool uh, npm, right? So I will go to this folder, SA front end, and take a look at the content of the SA front end folder. The same thing, whatever you have seen in the GitHub URL. There is a SRC folder. If you take a look at the content of SRC, there are a number of JavaScript available, and there is a components folder, and inside that there are other JavaScripts also available. So let's keep it as it is. And then there is a public folder in the same project. 
the public folder contains some HTML file, some image, and etc. And then what else you find inside it? You find a file called package.json. And if you if Tom opens this file package.json, what he find is a list of dependency that the developer have put inside this file. So these are the dependencies the SA frontend project depends on. SA frontend or our JavaScript project that will run on the browser. This project depends on these many dependencies. So you will find a file in every JavaScript project. You would find a file with the name package.json and you need this file. NPM will be reading this file and building your JavaScript code into an executable form. Okay. So, in order to build the JavaScript project, first of all, you need uh, npm installed. Currently, npm is not installed on Tom's laptop, so that is exactly what Tom is going to do. He's going to install npm. Even Maven is also not installed. Python pip is also not installed. So, that's exactly what I am going to do. I'm going to install uh, npm, Maven, and Python pip first. It must be installed, then only you can build them. So let me go ahead and install it. Uh, first of all, I am going to log out from Tom and I'm going to log in as root user. And I'm going to run the command apt get update and apt get install. I'm going to install npm. I want to install Maven and I also want to install a Python pip. Python pip is the package name for installing pip. So just run this command and it will install all the build tools. It will install npm, right? I know that I also need npm, right? So that's why I am unable to locate the package python pip. I think the package name is python3 pip. Let's see. You can always search in Google, right? If you have any confusion in the name of the package, you can always search in Google. What is the Ubuntu package for pip? You will get the exact package name. So I already knew it is npm is the package name and Maven is the package name and Python 3 pip are the package names. So I'm just installing them. And once they are installed, you can use those tools uh, to build our project by running some commands, right? We are going to see that. So basically, Tom wanted to build uh, the JavaScript project, Java project, and also Python project. And he he know that you know npm is what he has to use for the JavaScript. Uh, Maven he has to use for Java, and Python pip for Python project. And he didn't have any of these things installed on his laptop, and that is exactly what he is doing. He installed all the software, and now. Let's take a look at, let me go to Tom's user and let's take a look at the project. Go to the SF render and now I am going to build this project. 
the first step of the build process for javascript project when we want to build it using npm first thing what i want to do is i want to run this command called npm install what npm install command does is it will read this file packages.json it will identify the dependencies it will start downloading all the dependencies one by one and the dependency will have transitive dependency everything will be downloaded one by one and all the dependency get downloaded that is what npm install command will do that is the first step of building javascript project using npm so let's run this command and you will find that you know it is downloading all the dependencies one by one it won't take much time but if you run this command on your t2 micro aws machine it will it will get struck because this command need more cpu and memory i had already increased the size of the machine to t2 medium that is why you know i am not getting any slowness or sluggishness i will show you that uh, how to do that i will show you later all right so what what my npm install command did is it read this file and downloaded all the dependencies and kept all the downloaded files inside the folder not modules not modules if you go into the not modules you would find lots of things right lots of dependencies a huge number a huge number why it is huge in number in the package.json there is only you know uh, 30 or 40 lines that's all not even 30 it's probably 20 but as i told you all the dependencies depends on some other dependencies so that need to be downloaded and that dependency might depend on other dependencies so it, it's like a tree and at the end there are a number of dependencies to be downloaded and npm command npm install command will download all the dependencies and the transitive dependency download them into this folder called not modules and this is one step you downloaded the dependency now you want to create a folder a folder like wordpress that can be put inside the www html folder of apache and you can see the website on the browser so you need that folder to be created that is the final executable file for the javascript project and that is exactly what i am going to do there's a command called npm uh, npm run build i believe this is the command what it does is it will take the dependency from this folder it will take the source code from the src folder it will take those images style sheets htmls etc from the public folder and put them together to create one single folder that is similar to the wordpress folder which can be put in www html folder and people can now browse it so run this command yes it is done it is done that's uh, that is done so what happened is a new folder got created with the name build and this folder you can simply copy into if you have a web server or apache server you can simply copy this folder into what ww html folder of apache and that's all that's all you will be able to uh, see the website by browsing for the apache url this is that folder these are the content you will copy to the document root of apache so you created the final executable code for the javascript all right 
So now we go to our next project, the Java project. Basin, small uh, note like, what does npm install uh, uh, does here? Uh, npm install will download all the dependencies, whatever is mentioned inside this file package which was just. Okay, well, once that is done, then only we should go for npm build, right? Right, right. So it's a two step process. First, you will run the npm install command to download the dependency and run, then npm run build command to create the final build folder. Yeah, it's a two step process. So, Basil, it has created the executable file or not? created a final folder that can be put inside the WS jml folder of apache yes that is the executable for uh, that you need for this particular project i told you there are different types of executable files in case of our java script project this is the executable hello can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Okay. Hello. That contains the plain text Java programs. If you go inside that folder, it contains the Java programs and also it has a form.xml file. If you open this form.xml file, you would actually be able to see the dependencies. The dependencies your Java code depends on. In our case, there are only two dependencies, but you know, remember this dependency can depend on other dependencies though there can be transitive dependencies as well so i'm going to execute this command this is one single command not two steps it's one single command called mvn install what this command does is it will take the code from the src folder compile them all and also it will download all the dependency whatever is mentioned in the form.xml file their transitive dependencies right and it will it will uh, it will do everything then put all these dependencies and code together to create one final executable file called jar file and also one more thing to run this software you need some application server so it will take the application server also so whatever your code need to run you know it will download everything together and it will create one final executable file a jar file so i'm going to run the mvn install command which won't take much time it will it will uh, it is downloading all the dependencies now and the transitive dependency once it is downloaded you know it will compile the source code it will create a final jar file that is the executable file for the java project yes it created it and it is located inside a folder called target so let's take a look at run the ls command you can see a new folder got created called target you go inside that folder and type the ls command you can find a jar file got created this is the executable file this is the final artifact or final executable file that you need for your java code java project so yes 
it means that for different project the final executable files will have different formats right in case of java script it was a website in case of java for our project it was a jar file right so it can be different different artifacts for different different project that you are generating but what matters is they are executables you don't need to go through this headache of downloading the dependencies compiling the code it's all done and you got a final executable file that is directly executable so you don't have to bother about the actual code or anything like that so you are done with your java project now i will go to the python project okay uh, before that you can take a short break take a short break of uh, five minutes we will continue after five minutes okay
Okay, guys, so let us continue. So what we had done so far, we had built, we have built the front end into an executable code, which is nothing but a website. And then the backend we have built into a jar file. Python, I'm not building yet. Uh, as I told you, Python, uh, you can just install all the dependency and you can execute Python programs. So I'm just holding that with Python. I will explain that later, right? Why I did that. All right. So, so you know that if you have the executable file, then you can execute them very easily, right? So let me draw something. So assume uh, this is the current situation. You have an executable file for the JavaScript. What is that executable file? It is a website, right? This is the JavaScript or SF frontend application. That is the name of the application. This is written in JavaScript. And what we did is we created an executable file, which is nothing but a website and do you know what are the headaches that you need to go through in order to run a website yourself first of all you need a machine like an aws machine you need and inside the machine you should install a web server software maybe apache apache need to be installed and then what else you have to do you have to copy these website files into the what ww html folder of apache and so we are done with the build management right now i am talking about a new topic so you really do not wish right especially when you know docker you had learned docker before when you know docker you know that rather than keeping the executable file you can rather keep a docker image the docker image would contain this executable file in it and it will also contain oh come on uh, All right, so you will copy this executable file inside a Docker image. Then you will install Apache inside the Docker image. And then you will, you know, keep this executable file in, in the WWW HTML folder of Apache. And then you simply create a container and the container will run your application on port 80. Anyone who connect to the container can see the application. So this is the right approach. Do you agree with me? Otherwise, you have to create a machine in AWS. You should install Apache in it. I'm talking about how you will run this software. You need a machine, you need Apache, and you need these files to be kept in the document group. So instead of doing all these things manually, what I had done is I had decided to create one docker image and this docker image would contain apache and whatever uh, the software need so that i can whenever i want to run the software i can simply create a container so that is the next step what we are going to do so far we had converted all the source code into executable form We had 
it's a front end application then we have a say web app then we have a say logic this is the javascript application and this is the java application and this is the python application and then what we did is we converted them into the executable form we converted into the exe file so you have you have created the exe files in case of python we have not created the exe files yet we will we won't do it actually uh, but yeah uh, we will talk about that later and this executable file i know that in order to run this website i need a web server i need apache i need a machine with apache installed in it so rather than doing that i decided to create a docker image a docker image that would contain the web server apache apache or nginx nginx is another web server which is similar to apache and nginx has a document root you can copy the files into the document root of nginx and you know the website files will be copied into the document root of the web server nginx or apache whatever nginx is a similar web server like apache so once you did that then you can simply create a container and your application will start running it would become as simple as that so let's forget about container creation part right now i want to create a docker image and here also i want to create a docker image what the docker image would have the docker image would contain this is a jar file in case of java what we created is a jar file and a jar file this is a website that we created and this is a jar file that we created to run a jar file you need a machine which has java installed in it java must be installed java or java development kit jdk must be installed on the machine and then you will execute this jar file inside that machine just like how you execute exe file in windows if you have a machine that has java installed in it you can execute this jar file whichever you created before and in case of python this source code already contains all the python program all i can simply do is i would just create a new docker image this docker image would have python installed in it yes if you want to execute python if you want to uh, execute a python program first python must be installed right so python installed in it and also all the dependency installed you can take this requirement.txt file which is already available here then using python pip you will install the dependencies so python pip also has to be present inside this docker image python pip has to be installed here and using python pip you would install all the dependency one by one and then you will run your python program whatever python program the developer had created you will run that python program at the time of container creation so my next plan is obviously to build a docker image because that is the perfect solution today you don't want to worry about you know for setting up this application you need web server installed and machine created etc for the java application you need a machine the machine must have java installed in it and you know that is your responsibility to run a python application you need a machine python must be installed python pip must be installed all the dependency must be installed and then you have to run the python program so you skip all these steps just by creating a docker image you know that docker image can contain everything and you know then to run your application all you need to do is just execute this docker image and create a container it is as simple as that so forget about container creation my intention is i want to create docker images for 
all these softwares and I will put this executable file in those Docker images along with all the environment that my software need. In other words, my software is ready to run as a container. So let us create this Docker images. And how do you create a Docker image? You will have a Docker file, right? You will have a Docker file. If you have a Docker file, all you do is you just run the Docker build command and then automatically it will execute this Docker file and create a Docker image. So in the Docker file, you will write the instruction. Apache must be installed or Nginx must be installed. Website, the build folder, right? That is the final folder we created for the JavaScript project. The build folder should be present in the document root of Nginx. Similarly, how about this one? It will have a Docker file and in the Docker file, you will write these instructions. What are they? This final jar file that you got created. It should be present uh, copied inside the Docker image. Then Java must be installed. This file will be executed at the runtime of the image at the time of container creation. Execute this file in, in case of this one at the time of uh, creating the container start nginx or start apache and similarly over here you will have a docker file with your python project also which will contain the instructions install python install python pip install all the dependency and then run the program at the runtime at the time of container creation execute the python program whatever you have in here so this is another practice that the company follow for today right uh, docker is comparatively a new tool in in the area of the whole build tools are there for years right they are there for you know 10 or more than 15 years the build tools are there in place but the docker you know previously there when there was no docker you do all these process manually when you want to run this exe file first of all you need a machine you will take the machine install apache or nginx in it you will manually copy the build folder into the document root and you will start apache then you can connect to your application uh, from your browser you avoid all these complexities just by creating a docker image so for every project that you develop you will maintain one docker file and this docker file contains the instructions to create the docker images so yes our project also have a docker file associated with each microservices and i'm going to take a look into that docker file let's let's take a look okay maybe uh, we will cover that topic tomorrow, right? It's uh, it's it's a bit late, so uh, you can check this. Uh, you know that is something I want you to take a look. Check each folder. You will find a Docker file, and look into the Docker file. It would contain the instructions to build a docker image so you are directly taking an image which already have nginx all you are doing is you are copying the website folder into the document root of nginx this is the document root of nginx similarly if you go to sa web app folder take a look at the docker file and it would contain the instructions uh, take the docker image the java docker image it already contains java no need to install java and then uh, cmd uh, expose uh, statement and copy the jar file that you that is available in the target folder into the docker image at this location and then execute execute that at the time of container creation cmd statement is all about 
executing this command at the time of container creation and similarly if you go to sa logic it also has a docker file uh, let's take a look at the docker file open the docker file and take a look so i will explain this tomorrow in detail it contains the instructions so you are taking a docker image from hub.docker.com that already have python you copy the programs sa folder into the docker image then you will execute this command pip3 install requirement.txt this will install all the modules then one more module you are installing some commands you will run to install all the necessary module and then you are setting your cmd the python program whatever the developer have written it would be executed at the time of container creation that is what cmd means so before you come to tomorrow's class i want you to go through that uh, we built docker image ourselves right for vectors please go through that video very very important i want all of you to go through that video we built a vectors image using docker right remember during our periodical sites training the last class of the periodical sites training watch that video once again make sure that you are clear with uh, the concept of developing your own docker image and why you are doing that right so it's very important to understand tomorrow's session uh, so please do that tomorrow we are going to create docker images for all the three applications that's the plan so any questions now apart from this we need to learn any other uh, build management tools like if other applications have been written in different languages then what we'll do then the build tools will be different and again we haven't learned them we would be using them depending on your project so uh, right uh, we haven't went into in depth of these build tools uh, how they work etc we just use them to build the project but yeah a different project uses different so your project uh, which if it is written in dotnet somebody asked this question uh, how about dotnet you use ms build i believe ms build if you if anyone want to correct me please do and in case of ruby you will use a bundler in case of php you use compose so there are different different build tools available for different programming languages so you may be using different different tools for your project so, but it doesn't matter i mean you know what they do right what they do is they they will download dependency and convert your uh, code into some executable form it could be a website or it could be a jar file or it could be an exe file or whatever it is you finally create um, create a executable file or artifact whatever the tools we need to know, follow this process only like the install process right 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 And also, you know, don't assume that whatever uh, tools we are learning, even Jenkins or even Maven or even Git also, probably it your, in your project, you may be using a completely different tool. Uh, so just uh, master only one or two tools, right? You don't need to learn, try to learn everything, but just a master in one or two tools. And uh, everything else is very, very similar the conceptually concept wise they are very similar so learning a different tools it's not a big deal right when you work in a company that is what you do you just keep learning your project what is the tool used for your project how it works and what is the process of building do you create docker images if you are doing it how the docker images are getting created is it a person doing it or is it automated using jenkins or some other tools so uh, probably you know for each project the different different tools are being used we will be uh, being specific in our course we will be uh, we have our tools that we would 
try to use and and uh, we will try to accomplish uh, some outcome using these tools and when it comes to uh, the outcome part that is the end end achievement even in your company also even though the tools are different uh, at the end what you need are, are artifacts and finally a docker image which has artifacts in it along with all the environment that artifacts in it so yeah so what is the most used uh, build management tool in the industry uh, all of them are important so there is no right answer to that question npm javascript is one of the most commonly used languages right uh, so due to that npm could be uh, the most used tool but you don't know right your company is using java developing the application in java then you are using definitely using np maven or and or different build tools that is that is for java so but no right answer to that question but yeah Um, okay. so, uh, if I want to go ahead, so I if I want to run all these command on my machine, so it, using the putty, so can I connect my Windows machine uh, by by giving the IP address, public IP address of my machine? Uh, so uh, no, I didn't get the question. Uh, like you know as of now we are, yeah as of now we are using the amazon machine yes. right uh, connect with putty yeah but if i want to run all these things or all these codes uh, in my machine my laptop machine so i have to yeah. give that ip address of public ip address of my machine is uh, that correct actually whatever we had done uh, they really don't need a public ip it, of course, when you want to run a website uh, and Apache web server, at that time, maybe public IP address would be good. Otherwise, whatever we have done, we have been creating artifacts and we are trying to create Docker images. Mm -hmm. So that can be done inside the laptop itself. So executable files can be created yeah, inside the laptop. Yeah, I can use this putty and do all this thing in my uh, laptop also, right? In laptop, in my laptop, not in Amazon oh, yeah. machine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you use putty to log into your Amazon machine, right? Right. So, uh, so uh, maybe uh, I'm just what I'm trying to say is. On your laptop, mm -hmm. if you want to download the code, you want to install Git on your laptop, mm -hmm. you want to run the Maven build on your laptop, you don't need putty. You can do everything within the laptop itself. Windows has a PowerShell where all these commands will work. MVN command will work. NPM command will work. Just make sure that you installed both NPM and Maven in your laptop so you can get the windows executable file you can download the exe file of npm download the exe file of maven then run them on your laptop on your windows laptop itself then all these tools will get installed inside your windows pc then open the powershell in your windows pc and uh, execute all the commands uh, whatever i have been discussing so you can do all these things from your windows pc or if you want to do it on the remote okay. Linux machine like I did, yes, you can log into your AWS machine using Putty, then do everything on that machine. So uh, when you are using okay. Putty, then you are so, doing um, what I am doing, right? There are no difference between our computers. So I am using a MacBook, but I am working yeah. on the remote Linux machine you use windows and you are working on the remote linux machine it means we both are working on remote linux machine if you are using putty then there is no difference uh, between our lab and environment we both work in the same linux machine i mean 
uh, working on a Linux machine, not inside our laptops. Okay, so if I want to use the Docker images or create a Docker images, so I, I have to use the PowerShell. Is that correct? Uh, so if you are going to use Putty, you can use Putty for everything. So if your plan no, is No, if to, I want to do a Windows version in my laptop. Okay, yes, that's correct. Then you would use PowerShell. Okay. Uh, okay after installing, so remember, you know, uh, only for Ubuntu you use apt-get install command, right? Uh, for Windows, you have to download the executable file and install them. So you should install Maven in your laptop, uh, npm in your laptop, uh, Python pick should be installed in your laptop. Docker should also be installed in your laptop if you want to create Docker images. So this many software you must install on your Windows PC then yes you can do all these things from the powershell yes okay so uh, basil my question is like you, now i am working on automation testing so uh, whatever we discuss now like we have all that pom.xml file uh, all these file with me so if i want to run all these thing on uh, or i want to give the my all these file to anyone else so can i do using the Ma maven like i am can I do like uh, exe file and give to them? Is how is the flow, or how it is working actually? Uh, we will come to that. We will come to that. So, okay. uh, we are not there yet. Thank you. Uh, Basil. So okay. <coughs> Yeah, actually, as per the yesterday's class, uh, I tried. Uh, some lab practice <coughs> uh, regarding this uh, branch creation and all okay but uh, i'm facing some issue over this uh, jerry's part like so will it affect or will it stuck me to go ahead uh, regarding this particular thing what we learned today uh, uh, in tom's everything looks good right tom's laptop yes looks good. Uh, exactly that's good enough because we have been I, I will I will uh, yeah sorry to interrupt you I, I will share that error with you as well but yeah in Tom's laptop everything is working fine that's good enough that's good enough okay. so let's continue to work on Tom's laptop because I'm getting some hint kind of thing like updates were rejected because the tip of your current branch is behind or like I'm not getting what is this all about. I will share it with you to understand this. No, I think I know the problem. You might have no. applied the patch on Jerry's computer. Uh, yes. Patch. Get status. Yeah, just send me an email. I will send you the command to correct it. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. But it won't stop you from today's session. I mean, whatever we did for today. Okay. Okay, Basil. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Basil, I uh, have. And go ahead, Abhay. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, used Marvin for the JavaScript, right? Uh, to build that uh, file, final file. JavaScript. Uh, npm for JavaScript. Maven for Java. Yeah. For Java. Sorry. So yeah. in that we use that uh, package so in that package all de uh, dependency will be there or we need to uh, define it you are right uh, in the in the final jar file it will have all the dependency in a executable form <coughs> okay will that will be developed will by a developer right or oh, we Some need again? to do that uh, that dependency will be wrote by a developer or uh, as a DevOps engineer, we need to do that. Uh, developer write the code. Dependencies are external programs which are freely downloadable from internet. That is what I mean by dependency. So NPM tool will take the source code. That is what your developer have written. It will compile it convert into a, an executable form then it will download all the dependency 
whatever is mentioned in the form.xml file they will be downloaded your code will be converted uh, and the final executable file would contain both the code your developer have written and the dependencies that is downloaded so dependencies are not developed by your developers they just they are nothing but some external program some free program which anyone in the world can download right so all developer will do is they will you know they will in one file in our case the form.xml the developer will write this these are the dependency my code depends on then automatically maven know how to download those files from the internet maven downloads them from the internet they are free programs and uh, putting them together the final executable file is created uh, right got it uh, i was asking about that only like uh, for dependency we need to mention that uh, these are the dependency we need to download for this program correct developer is first that by creating the form.xml file or packages.json file yeah got it thank you Basil, I have sent you one query uh, on Docker image. So click on that. I have sent you one email. Okay. So, anyone else? How oh, good? So uh, I assume you know we are in the right track as right as CICD has uh, lots of discussions would come in CICD it's uh, more than the practicals uh, this uh, this pipeline is very important right where we start we start from the git we made the code change and then this code that you have written should be built into some executable form and again today executable files are not enough because executable files are again difficult to manage so you want to run executable file you have to set up a machine and environment so instead of that you know you decided to create a docker image which are very easy to manage that you already know so you step out to convert them into docker images and now you want to run these docker images as containers that would be the next step that we didn't discuss yet so you should have a clear clarity about the pipeline and what we are doing right uh, so CICD training is very very important from the uh, from the concept perspective what is expected what you are expected to do to achieve the right CICD practices for your project so, yeah. Basil, when we are going to start a CD? Uh, yeah, that we will we'll start soon. We have some topics pending. Okay, uh, anyone else, any questions? Basil, uh, Ansible uh, video, project video. Can you send me an email, which one is missing? Okay. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, so see you tomorrow, uh, same time, bye. Bye, Basil.